In today's podcast, I'll explore the ballad Tam Lin. This ballad must be the epitome of the classic British ballad with its tale of seduction, elfin magic and a brave heroine, rescue and final curses from an angry elfin queen. Along the way I'll sing samples of the tunes associated with the ballad and look at its background, printing history and the folklore behind the narrative. Lady Margaret, Lady Margaret been sewing at a seam. She look at east, she look at west, and saw those merry green woods growing green. She saw those merry green woods, for she kilted up her petticoats. It's up to them she ran, and when she came to those merry green woods, she pulled those branches down, my dear, she pulled those branches down. For is there she spied a gentleman coming through the wood to her side. Oh, it's who gave you all leave, my dear, to pull those branches down, my dear, to pull those branches down. For he cast her by her middle small, he gently laid her down. It's since you've got your will of me, come tell to me your name, kind sir. Come tell to me your name. The tune and words were recorded in 1956 by Hamish Anderson and Betsy Johnson in Glasgow. Lady Janet wanders off into the woods of Carter Howe, despite the warnings that it's a sinister place. As she plucks a rose from the bush, Tamlin appears and seduces her. Then he disappears before she can find his name. Later, on realising that she's pregnant, she returns to the wood to either rid herself of the child or find the father. Tamlin appears again and explains that he was once a mortal but has been abducted to the land of fairy. He has lived there for seven years but the time has come for him to pay a teed to hell. It is Halloween and probably the final chance of escape. He persuades Janet to await the elfin procession at midnight. Among the elfin knights, she'll find Tamlin seated on a white horse. She must pull him from the horse and cling to him despite the many transformations into frightening beasts. Once he assumes human form, she washes him in well water, covers him with her green mantle, having won him back from the elfin court. In some versions, the Queen of Elves curses Tamlin for his escape. Professor Child, in his English and Scottish popular ballads, points out that many of the early printed texts were derived from a similar source, with plenty of reworking of the previously printed text, sometimes with the lines and verses fleshed out to create a more fluent storyline, a new printable version. This was not uncommon. The endeavour to produce a finished song based on odd verses is always tempting, whether by early collectors, printers of street ballads, or those collected in the 20th century. The earliest printing of Tamlin was in 1776 in Ancient and Modern Scots Songs, edited by David Hurd, under the title Curtain Hall or the Fairy Court. This was a fragment of the ballad. This was followed in 1792 by a version provided by Robert Burns with a tune and printed in Volume 5 of the Scots Musical Museum under the title Oh I Forbid You Maidens All. Oh I forbid ye maidens all that were gold on your hair to come and go by Carter Hall for young Tamlin is there. There's none that goes by Carter Hall, but they leave him a fee, either the rings or green mantles, or else the maiden head. Janet has kilted her green kirtle, a little above her knee, and she has braided her yellow hair, 
a little about a brie. And she's away to Carterhall, as fast as she could go. And when she came to Carterhall, Tamlin was at the well. And there she found his steed standing, but away was himself. She had not pulled a double rose, a rose but only two. Till up then started young Tamlin, saying, Lady, tell to me, Why do you pull that rose, Janet, and why break thou the bow? Versions of the Tamlin ballad were still being found in the 1900s. A set of words but no tune was sent to Gavin Gregg from Bell Robertson, one of his main ballad providers of the early 1900s. In the mid-1950s, Hamish Henderson collected a tune and words in Glasgow from Betsy Johnson, which was later used for the reworking of Tamlin by A. L. Lloyd. The Argyllshire singer Duncan Williamson was recorded several times singing Tamlin under the title of Lady Margaret. Bertram Bronson, in Traditional Tunes of the Child Ballads, points out that the various collected tunes bear little resemblance to each other, although there is often similarity in contour and metre. Bronson provided five tunes for Tamlin. The location name appears as Carter Howe in the version supplied by Robert Burns. Carter Howe is a plain at the confluence of the Ettrick and the Yarrow, scarcely an English mile above the town of Selkirk. The location of the events within the ballads vary, dependent on where the song was collected. The belief in the supernatural and its close contact with the human race is very ancient and widespread throughout Europe and the Indian and African continents. The text reflects these elements of magic that was commonly believed when dealing with Elfland. Just what was the nature of the fairy beings is subject to wide speculation. This belief ranges from the Christian, as fallen angels, to the Celtic, as descendants from the Druids, that they were ancient Picts to parallel races, and even beings from outer space. We must understand that the fairy folk were not the pleasant little winged creatures of Victorian children's stories, but were sinister, amoral, human-like beings living on the edges of humanity. They were areas where their world touched the world of the humans. And it's worth remembering that fairy originally meant a state of enchantment rather than a fairy person. She let her seam fall to her foot, the needle to her toe, and she has gone to chase his wood as fast as she could go. When she began to pull the flowers, she pulled both red and green, then bide it come and bide it go, said fair maid, let it alone. Why do you pluck the flowers, lady? Oh, why climb you the tree? Oh, why come you to chase his wood without the leave of me? Oh, I will pull the flowers, she said. Oh, I will break the tree. For chase's wood is all my own. I'll ask no leave of thee. That tune was found in the manuscripts of the printer and researcher William Blakey. The words were from the William Motherwell collection under the title of Janet of Carter Howe. The belief that humans could be abducted by the fairy folk has been prevalent in Europe for many centuries. Thomas the Rhymer was taken by the Queen of Elfland and was a changed man when he returned. The awareness of time is suspended whilst in fairyland and what passes as a few days is actually the passing of years. James Napier in Folklore of the West of Scotland, printed in 1879, says that it was commonly believed throughout Scotland that the Queen of Elves was a kind of feudatory sovereign under certain, to whom she was obliged to pay a cave or a tithing kind. And as her own fairy subjects strongly objected to the transfer of their allegiance, their quarter was usually made up of children who had been stolen before the rite of baptism had been administered to them. This had been believed for many centuries. Children who were not churched were prone to abduction. A doppelganger child left in their place a changeling, not of this world, often willful and fair. Professor Child gives many examples of the tales wherein attempts were made to win back a loved one from the fairy court. It's fraught with danger, both physical and spiritual. 
When Janet arrives at Carter House, she finds Tam Lin's horse tethered at the well. A how is a piece of low ground near a flowing stream. Water has often been associated with the fairy folk, and wells and streams are places of enchantment. The horse symbolises the earthly connection to the other side, and is a link to Tam Lin. Trespass on lands belonging to the fairy folk exposed mortals to danger. Take an article from the fairy lands, it requires a tithe or a forfeit to appease the fairy folk. Janet unknowingly summons Tam Lin by plucking the flower, a rose or a double-headed rose. There are strong beliefs that the breaking of the tree boughs, stripping of bark and plucking of flowers can summon tree spirits. The rose is a symbol of passion, romance and seduction, and it's still used to indicate courtship and love. It might also be symbolic of Janet's maidenhead, her token for the rose. She doesn't seem to resist Tamlin's seduction. He's taken her by the milk-white hand, and by the grass-green sleeve. He laid her low on the good green wood, and never once has to leave. When he has had his will of her, his will that he's taken. He's taken her by the middle small, and set her to her feet again. She turned right and round about to ask her true love's name. But nothing heard and nothing saw, and all the woods grew dim. When she's come to her father's court, as fine as any queen. But when eight months were past and gone, got on the gown of green. That tune was noted by William Oliver of Laidlaw. The words are from the Peter Buchan collection. Janet is seduced and becomes pregnant. There is no indication of the time of year when this happens, although the rose is in bloom. The only indication of time is Halloween, when she returns to Carter Howe to either summon Tam Lin or to kill the bonny babe when she plucks the rose once again. Halloween, or Hogmanay, or Samhain was once the final evening of the year and the link between the different worlds was weakened. We're now looking at the old calendar. The beginning of the new year was fixed exactly six months from Beltane, or the Celtic May Day, a festival of fire. These days named as Walpurgis Night, named after an 8th century Catholic saint. These festivals celebrated the coming of summer and the coming of winter. Like May Day, bonfires were lit at Samhain to keep the wicked spirits at bay. The spirits of the dead walked amongst the living, before being banished from the earth. The fairy world and the mortal world could communicate. Hogmanay is the end of the year. And in Tam Lin's case, the end of his seven years of grace in the land of fairy. It may mean that this ends a cycle where he's trapped in the land of fairy, or that he's due to be passed on to hell as part of the tithe laid down on the fairy folk. So that night at midnight hour, Lady Margaret made her way, and when she came to the five-mile gate, she waited patiently, only, she waited patiently. Oh, first there came some dark, some dark, and then there came some brown. But when there came a milk-white steed, she pulled the rider down, down. She pulled the rider down. Oh, first he turned to a wicked snake, and then to a lion so wild. She held him fast, and she feared him not. He was the father of her child, her child. He was the father of her child. Then he turned to a naked man, and an angry man was he. She threw her mantle over him, and then she had him free. Oh, then she had him free. 
That tune and words comes from the singing of Duncan Williamson, a furnace in Argyleshire, and it was recorded in 1991 by John Howson. The shape changing of Tamlin's body as Janet attempts to pull him back into the human world is quite a common theme in other European tales. The washing of his body in well water or milk is an ancient counterspell. He washes away the enchantment with an earthly element. She covers him with a green mantle, a protection and a symbol of Janet's ownership of Tam Lin. The green mantle hides him from being seen by the fairy folk within the green wood. A fine ballad for singing with a great storyline, a strong, determined, heroic lady and magical elements, enough to please most audiences. The most recent popular reworking of the text was done by A. L. Lloyd in the early 1960s. Lloyd used the words and tune from the version recorded by Hamish Henderson of Betsy Johnson in Glasgow in 1956. He added text from the Gavin Gregg collection which had been supplied by Miss Bell Robertson as the main framework of the song. And he modernised the text structure. This version is the one most often heard in the English folk clubs. I will end this podcast with a reworked and modernised version of Tamlin by A. L. Lloyd. Lady Margaret, Lady Margaret, was sewing at her seam, and she's all dressed in black. And the thought came to her to run into the wood, to pull flowers for her hat, her hat, to pull flowers for her hat. So she hoisted a petticoat a bit above the knee, and so nimbly ran o'er the ground. And when she came to the merry green wood, Well, she pulled them branches down, down, Well, she pulled them branches down. Suddenly she spied a fine young man, He was standing by a tree. How dare you pull them branches down, Without the leave of me, my dear, Without the leave of me. Well, this little wood, oh, it's me very own. My father gave it to me. And I can pull the branches down without the leave of thee, young man, without the leave of thee. He's taken her by the milk-white hand and by the grass-green sleeve. And he pulled her down at the foot of the bush. And he never once has to leave her leave, and he never once has to leave. And when it was done, she turned all about to ask her true love's name. But she nothing heard and nothing saw, and all the woods grew dim, grew dim, and all the woods grew dim. There's four and twenty ladies all in the hall. And they're all playing at chess, except it was the Lady Margaret. And she's green as any glass, me boys, oh, she's green as any glass. There's four and twenty ladies all in the hall, grown as red as any rose, except it was the Lady Margaret. And pale and wan she goes, she goes. All pale and wan she goes. Up then spoke a little serving girl. She lifted her hand and smiled. I think my lady has loved too much. And now she goes with child, me dears. And now she goes with child. Up then spoke a second servant girl. Oh, ever alas, says she. But I think I know a herb in the merry green wood. It'll twine the babe from thee, madam. It'll twine the babes from thee. Lady Mary, she got her silver comb, made haste to comb her hair. And she's away to the merry green wood, as fast as she can tear, can tear, oh, as fast as she can tear. She hadn't pulled in that merry green wood a herb but barely one, when by her stood the young Tamlin, 
saying, Margaret, leave it alone, alone, oh, Margaret, leave it alone. Why do you pull that bitter little herb, the herb that grows so grey, for to destroy that fine baby that we got in our play, my dear, that we got in our play? Come tell to me now, young Tamlin, if an earthly man you be. I'll tell you no lies, says young Tamlin. I was christened as good as thee, my dear. I was christened as good as thee. But I rode out on a bitter, bitter night. It was from my horse I fell. And the Queen of Elfland, she caught me in yon green hill to dwell, to dwell, in yon green hill to dwell. But tonight is Halloween, lady, the elven court will ride, and if you would your true love win, by the mill bridge you must hide, my dear, by the mill bridge you must hide. And first will run the black horse, and then we'll run the brown, and then race by the white. You hold him fast and fear him not. He's the father of your child, my love. He's the father of your child. They'll turn me all in your arms to many a beast so wild. But you hold on fast and fear no ill. It's the father of your child, my love. Is the father of your child. Lady Margaret has taken up her silver comb, made haste to comb her hair, and she's away to the old mill bridge, as fast as she could tear, could tear, as fast as she could tear. And about the dead hour of the night, she heard the bridal ring, that very sound it chilled her heart more than any earthly thing it did more than any earthly thing and first run the black horse and then run the brown and then race by the white well she held it fast and feared it not it's the father of her child her child oh it's the father of her child the thunder rolled across the sky, the stars blazed bright as day. The Queen of Elves gave a chilling cry, Young Tamlin's away, away, young Tamlin's away. And the very first thing they turned him to was a lion that roared so wild. But she held him fast and feared him not. He's the father of her child, her child, he's the father of her child. And the very next thing they turned him to was to a loathsome snake. He says, hold me fast and fear me not, for I'm one of God's own make, my love, I'm one of God's own make. And again they changed him, all in her arms, to a red-out bar of iron. But she held it fast, she feared it not, and it did to her no harm, no harm, it did to her no harm. And the very last thing they changed him to, was to a naked man, she flung the mantle over him. She cried, my love, I've won, I've won. Oh, she cried, my love, I've won. And the Queen of Elves called from a bush. She's red as any blood. I should have torn out your eyes, Tamlin, and put into eyes of wood, of wood, and put into eyes of wood. Oh, had I known this very morn, Tamlin from me would be gone. I would have taken out his heart of flesh, and put in a heart of stone, of stone, and put in a heart of stone. 